Hello, this is Kent Kersey, professor of the class. In this video, I want to set the context for week two of the class. Last week, I introduced the idea that the only thing that we can take for granted is that we can't take anything for granted. Uh, you know, for example, so if you drive somewhere in America, you can take it for granted that you'll be driving on the right side of the road. If you're living in England, you're going to take it for granted that you're going to drive on the left side of the road. Also, like if you get married in America, you can take it for granted that you're only going to have one spouse. But if you live in a place where polygamy is practiced, you can't take the fact that there's only going to be one spouse for granted. And even though most of us live in places where there aren't dress codes, we can take it for granted that you're not going to be wearing a tuxedo to Walmart. If you think about it, in today's world, there is a lot less that you can actually take for granted. For example, this summer I met someone and she told me that she'd been married for a couple years. Now, if I were talking to her, let's say 20 years ago, I could take it for granted that she married a man, but you can't take that for granted now. And in fact, she did tell me some information about her wife. There are so many reasons that we can't take things for granted. And in fact, like we all know people see things differently. Some people on your Facebook feed love Trump, others think he's the Antichrist, right? And as we saw in that Comey confusion video last week, people can see the exact same event but see it drastically differently. A technical term for this is naive realism, and this maybe could also be understood as common sense realism. It's the idea that you see the world objectively as it really is, and you're right about your perspective because it is objective and logical. This is why when you drive somewhere, people going slower than you are going too slow and people going faster than you are maniacs. But when you think about that Comey confusion video, you see that people really need to step back and ask why they interpret things so differently. And this leads us to this week's topic. This week, we'll be looking at the second principle of worldview, and that is slow down. This idea refers to the work of author Daniel Kahneman. Now, we're going to be watching a video about Kahneman's, Kahneman's idea of fast and slow thinking later this week. But to summarize this idea, think about when you drive home from school or work. Now, I know for me that I've made this same drive so many times that it just feels automatic. When I make the drive, I might be listening to a podcast and get lost in thought. When I get home, I realize that I don't even remember anything about the drive. I couldn't tell you the number of cars I passed or what kind of billboards were right in front of me. In this case, I was using what Kahneman would call fast thinking. It's the thinking that runs just automatically. Now, let's say that on my drive, I discovered that the, the route I usually take is closed for some reason. Then I would start using slow thinking. This is thinking that is deliberate. For example, if I ask you to solve the equation 2 plus 2, you would be using fast thinking. You don't even have to think about it. It's just a reaction. But, I ask, but if I ask you to solve something like 45 times 78, you would have to use slower thinking. You'd have to write it down. You'd have to be very intentional about it. A reason that this is important for worldview is that we need to understand that we frequently react quickly to situations that might be better served as opportunity to engage in a slower, more engaged pace. For example, look at this example. You seem very angry, and I wanted to know what is it about the presence of these the, the Baptist church that makes you so angry? Well, it's not the Baptist church. It's the hateful church of those people. All they do is preach hate. I thought, you know, Jesus, what they claim, he was a peaceful person, yet all they do is preach hate. That's what I'm angry about. They, they say that the gays and the lesbians and everything are causing all these problems. It's not true. It's people like that, narrow-minded, that are causing the problem. A lot of times our first reaction is to dismiss this because our fast thinking tells us to, because of emotion. But if we consciously engage in slower, more deliberate thinking, we can actually listen to what's being said and offer some less emotional responses. We'll also be reading about Jonathan Haidt's idea of how we can understand ourselves. You know, why do we do the things that we don't want to do? Why are emotions so strong? 
And Hyde talks about the analogy of an elephant and a rider. Now, the rider thinks he's in charge, but the elephant is so strong, it won't go anywhere it doesn't want to go. So if the elephant represents our emotions and the rider represents our rational side, we need to figure out ways to bring these two sides together. And I hope that these ideas will help you better understand yourself and how you engage with the world around you. And this week, uh, pay special attention to the directions about the discussions this week. I have some time frames and some grading included in there. But thanks for being part of the class, and I hope that this is a great week for you. Goodbye.